Broadcasting live from SETI Alpha 6 in the Andromeda Galaxy, this is Mr. C. Happy Aloha Friday to you all, and a happy, happy Aloha Friday it is. I've got my sweatshirt on because it's a little bit cool in the bunker. So, and I uh, need to just mention a few things about next week. Next week, um, we're, we are going to wind up, we're going to finish astronomy. So we're going to focus next week on stars, and then we're going to focus on star clouds, a.k.a. how stars are organized into massive rotating, revolving uh, bodies called galaxies. So we'll focus on that, the size of the universe, and a few just uh, finish up things having to do with astronomy. Um, we'll review telescopes that you just did with Mr. Gilbert, and um, we will, um, anyway, we'll go over all of that next week. So hang on to your lesson summaries. They are a big deal. On your white sheet while I'm chatting with you, if you will number to uh, number to 14 on your white sheet, if you would. So I'm telling you ahead of time, next Friday will be a, a test, a, a nice big size test on astronomy. So early in the week and then um, throughout the week, I'll go over what topics next Friday's test will cover. So it, and you might want to put that in your lesson planner right now, huh? It will include Psalm 19.1. So the heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. So when we look at the night sky or the daytime sky, we see the sun and we realize um, just how amazing the design of the sun is. And then we realize um, the design of um, everything in the galaxy when we look at night. So anyway, that will be next Friday. So... You're numbering to 14. And here we go. So anyway, I did want to let you know that um, this is for everyone, but especially for RLO students. Are you paying attention, RLO students? If there are tests you haven't taken, whether you're an RLO student or not. So RLO students, you need to get those tests taken care of. You need to get them done. And RLO students, some of you apparently get assignments completed, but then you don't click on them properly. And when I look, there's nothing there. It hasn't been forwarded to me. So it comes up not sent. So anyway, you need to double check all of that. Um, you non-RLO in-class students, if you haven't taken a test yet, you haven't made up a test, you need to make arrangements with Mr. Gilbert. The same thing about worksheets, about um, regular homework assignments. So, so you need to catch up on those, get them in so, so I can um, get those into the computer. So, and I'll be um, taking care of all of that during Thanksgiving week. Now, you know we have next week, and we wind up astronomy next week. Then we have Thanksgiving week. Then we have two weeks where I'll do a creation evolution focus. And then we review for finals and take final tests. So we essentially have next week, then Thanksgiving week, two more weeks of teaching, so three weeks of teaching, and then final tests. So after next week, we have um, basically three weeks left after next week. So two weeks 
of creation evolution and then one week of finals. So are you giving us a study guide? You're going to use your lesson summaries as a study guide, that in your journal. So make sure you hang on to all of that. Now today I'd like to focus really quick and I don't have a lot of time because Mr. Gilbert is going to work with you. I want you to write down on your white sheet really quick what are my favorite divine designs. So on your white sheet you've numbered to 14. Write down what my favorite divine designs are. And then I'll tell you really quick. And I might do a new one today if I have time, but I might not have time. So on your white sheet, you're writing down divine designs. I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that, and I'll tell you what they are. What are my favorites? I've referred to some of my favorites. You've numbered to 14, so. By the way, I'll give you number 14. Number 14 is the sea otter. There's a picture of it in the back of the room. Do you see it up there up high? A sea otter. The special equipment they have, they've got a number of things, but the really big equipment is they have really thick fur and a good layer of blubber and that keeps them warm in really cold water, even up in Alaska, off of Alaska. So really thick fur, the sea otter. And later you might add that to your journal list of divine designs. Not right now. So number 14 is a sea otter. And they also use rocks. So if they've got like an abalone shell and they want to get it open, they'll get a rock, use it as a tool, smash open the abalone shell. How do they know to do that? They're, I'm sorry, I'm whispering, I don't want them to hear. They're, you know, just not really bright animals. But boy, they've got neat behavior. It's a God thing that they know how to do that. They're wired to do that. So pretty cool. Okay, keep writing down as many of my favorite SSRs, I'm sorry, divine designs as you can come up with. Another minute or two. There's a kind of bonus involved here, so you want to, you know, go for this. Oh, a bonus. Okay. It's kind of a big deal, really, so you might want to jot down as many as come to mind. As many of my divine designs, my favorites that come to mind. Another minute. Now in Romans 1, while you're still writing, God weighs in on what he feels is a really big deal as far as evidence for his existence. And what is it? It's listed in Romans 1. And the phrase, the really powerful phrase in Scripture in Romans 1 is this. Here it is. Basically, it says God's um, existence is proven, evidence for it, through what has been made. So you look around at what he made and go, oh, yeah. All of these divine designs prove his existence. They couldn't have happened accidentally. They're very powerful evidence for a creator, God. So there you have it. Okay, here we go. Let's see what you had. Now, uh, I'd quickly like you to take out a red pen. Quick, quick, quick. Red pen. Put your pen or pencil away that you just wrote down the double Ds. Red pen out. Quick, quick. Yes, I should have had you get it out earlier. Okay, here's my list. Top of my list is the human body. So human body. So put plus one with your red pen beside each one you get. So the human body. Number two, DNA. 
either one of those probably could be flipped, the DNA molecule that causes every living thing to look like it looks, have the equipment it has, and in the case of animals, the instincts, abilities that they have, animals and humans. So DNA, human body, DNA, the human cell, so complicated, a human cell. And there's a whole bunch of different kinds of cells. So really big deal. Any system of the body, you could put that down. That would be number four. So human body, DNA, human cells, any system of the human body. Just over the top complexity, no way it happened accidentally. You've got all of these parts of each system that work together um, to make the system work properly, like your digestive system that you will be using later that's at work right now, actually, taking care of your lunch. So, and then humpback whale, I think that's number five, yeah, humpback whale my favorite ocean animal, and then a giraffe, my favorite land animal, planet Earth, with all its just rights, it's number seven. Number eight, a honeybee, with its amazing ability to locate the scout bees, locate the nectar source, come back to the hive, and do a very complex dance that the other worker bees can interpret, and then they can fly right to where the nectar source is. It took 25 years for an animal behaviorist to break the honeybee dance code, what it meant. Isn't that just incredible? And they're just little pinhead brain-sized bees. So way to go, God. So that was number eight. Number nine, birds and all their ability with their hollow bones and their rounded wings that give them lift and so they can fly. Powerful wing muscles, on and on. Bunch of other stuff too. That was number nine. Number 10, just animal migration. Animal migration. Number 11, the monarch butterfly. Monarch butterfly. its ability to fly all the way to Mexico, its migration to Mexico, the monarch butterfly. Number 11, there's a whole bunch of different things um, that we could put there, but I'm going to go with an owl. Just, Mr. she love birds, don't you? Well, birds are just, you know, so glorify God. Just owls with their amazing different kinds of feathers, their wonderful nighttime vision, their ability to fly stealthily and quietly. So a mouse can't even hear them approaching. So sharp claws, beak for eating. I won't go into all the details. That, was, that one is number 12. 13, the bar-tailed godwit, which was one that we did recently and its ability to fly nonstop from Alaska to New Zealand. Nine straight days, 24 hours of nonstop flight. They know to, um, they know to carbo load before they go. They really load up the carbs. Well, you know, for a bird. So to have that ability, know to migrate that far, but be able to do it physically, just you know, I'm high-fiving God on every one of these. 14 is a peregrine falcon, its ability to dive at 250 miles an hour. So fastest bird in flight, 250 plus miles per hour. Wow, wow, wow. That's half the speed of a 737 that's got jet engines. Now I know it uses gravity. How does it know to do that? The peregrine falcon number 14, and then 15 is a sea otter, the sea otter, okay? So the sea otter. Now here's the deal. So I've got 15, right? If you have at least half of these, if you have 
8. If you have 8, so if you have 8 out of 15, you know, you remember the number of my divine designs, I'd like you to put plus 1 at the top and you'll want to hand it in. So I'll change one point in the grade book. It makes a difference. It's a little difference. So I'll change one point. So there you go. Okay, almost ready to turn it over to Mr. Gilbert. A couple of knock-knock jokes for you. So here they are. So now they're dumb as all get out, so you may roll your eyes. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wah. Wahoo. What are you so excited about? So that's one of them. Next one, knock, knock. Who's there? Little old lady. Little old lady. Who? Wow, I didn't know that you could yodel. So there you have it. So anyway, next week we'll do the sun and stars and galaxies and all of that. So I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Gilbert. And he has a number of things that he wants to do with you. So have a great weekend. Happy Aloha Friday. Take it away. Mr. Gilbert, thank you.